Hi guys, you're really welcome to this channel, Narc Con. If you're newly subscribed, you're so welcome here and I hope you'll find it a very healing place to be. Please contribute to the channel by leaving comments, like, share and subscribe will help a small channel like this to grow and get the word out there. Guys, today I would like to read um, some correspondence from a subscriber to the channel who's been very supportive of the work and does contribute greatly to what we do and what we're all about. It's a very interesting quote and it's very apt, particularly if you're well versed in the world of narcissism and you have been tortured or injured by a cluster B personality individual. So I'll read the quote and then I'd like to get into the explanation of it. And sorry for the glaring light, I'll shut the computer screen down soon. Um, but let's just get into the quote. So the quote was sent and it's by Sun Tzu, I think T-Z-U, a Chinese philosopher from 500 BC. So guess what? There were narcissists around since 500 BC. Okay, it says, he says this Chinese philosopher, I guess it was a man, all, war all warfare is based primarily on deception of an enemy. Fighting on a battlefield is the most primitive way of making war. There is no higher, no art higher than to destroy your enemy without a fight by subverting anything of value in enemy's country. Very interesting because in my view, and I'm sure in yours, having experienced it, the covert narcissist subverts everything in your world. And they do it using a series of diabolical manipulations. And we've taken separate videos to explain what those are. The manipulations the covert narcissist uses. And if you're new to this, look up these manipulations because it may make a light bulb go off in your head in relation to what you experienced. They use the techniques of triangulation, isolation, lying, cheating, and many more. Look under manipulation tactics of the narcissist in any of the playlists and you can really get into diagnosing whether you were actually with a narcissist or not. I digress. So subverting, the narcissist goes in, in disguise, unbeknownst to you, that they do not have your best interests at heart. This person engages in a loving, inverted commas, relationship with you. And what they proceed to do during that relationship is to literally decimate you, to decimate your world, so that you come out of the relationship not knowing who you are, not knowing who to trust, not feeling any joy or hope in life, being addicted to their manipulation of your hormones, having to rebuild a world, having to make a new future for yourself in a state of shock, in a state of utter confusion as to what the hell went on in that relationship and why you can't get closure from the person and why they're doing diabolical things to you in relation to how they end the relationship. And it's, it's a battle. There are a number of battles once you are discarded by a narcissist or leave a narcissist that you need to overcome before you can actually get back on track with your life. So the first battle is to understand what you've been through. The narcissist's war is a silent war. It is ongoing every day that you are interacting with a narcissist. And that is why it is so important when you are finished in the relationship with the narcissist to be finished. Any communication from them 
is part of them keeping a hook in your head, in all the areas of your head that they have already embedded themselves. Communication with them or any contact with them keeps those neuropathways alive in your head. And what we're trying to do in our recovery stage is to rebuild neuropathways in our head that are healthy and correct for us and that are not a distortion of reality. So we need to get our views of ourself back. We need to get our views of reality back after the narcissist has subverted our world. So what does that mean to subvert your world? What does the silent war of the narcissist mean? It means that they come into the relationship. They give you what they perceive you want and what you tell them what you want. They make you seem complete. And from that point onwards, when they have your trust and control of you, they carefully and systematically decimate your world. They take it apart piece by piece by piece. They influence your views of your family, your friends, what you believe in, the depth of who you are, they take apart. They make you feel that you're not good enough. You introspect, you try and change yourself. You don't know why you're not good enough. They press around on childhood wounds. They gaslight you to the, f the extent that everything is confusing. No matter which way you move to please them, to do more for them, to subjugate yourself, to lose yourself, nothing works. And then they compound that by telling you that you are not a good person, that you and what you believe in are total and utter rubbish. So you are left floundering after the relationship has ended and your view of everything that you previously knew and believed in in your life has to be rebuilt. But herein lies the hope. Because the only way the narcissist can succeed in winning the war is for you to continue to believe in them. And that's the silent war. That's the subverting of everything in your world the subverting of everything that's good, everything you believe in and who you believe you are. So the work and the second battle after you escape the narcissist or the narcissist leaves you is to put all those pieces back together again, to take them back from the narcissist, excuse me, and to see the narcissist for who they are. They are nothing more than a computer program than someone who's trying to take power over your mind by you believing in them, being superior, knowing anything, knowing what they say they know, you actually believing in the persona that they've created is the subverting of your world. Once you stop believing in the narcissist, once you understand that they have been systematically destroying you by pulling your world apart, by critiquing your world and you, by devaluing everything you hold dear, by triangulating you and setting you against people, by having you in a totally confused state where your reality is distorted to the fact that you can't make a decision for your life. Sometimes people get to the stage where they don't know whether to turn left or right or what time they were to turn up at an appointment or what food to choose in the supermarket. The narcissist has subverted everything within your decision-making process. And therefore, they have silently taken control of your world. And that's the war, I believe, 
that the Chinese philosopher is talking about. To all intents and purposes, and even to you, they gaslight you into believing that they love you and that they're doing what they're doing for you and for your benefit. And it's all for you. So why are you feeling so bad? Why are you feeling so tortured and confused? Because they're presenting as not an enemy. They're not fighting you, but they are. Just remember guys, it's very confusing being with a narcissist and getting out of a relationship with a narcissist is highly confusing. But if you understand the art of the silent war of the narcissist that was obviously going on in 500 BC and philosophers were able to understand the primitive war was the obvious one. At least you knew what you were fighting. With a narcissist, you don't know that you're fighting. You don't know that you're in love with your enemy. You don't know that there's an enemy living, lying beside you in your bed. There's an enemy giving you things and messing with your mind. The enemy appears to be your friend. It's a friend you would never wish to have. In all the darkest corners of hell, if you've seen what these people do, if you have seen, if you have witnessed from one of these individuals the evil that they are capable of, then you will fully understand the silent war of the narcissist that is the most diabolical because it is a silent war and does not appear to the outside world and to you initially to be so. Thanks guys for listening. Thank you, Sam, for sending in that, sending, emailing me that quote. It's very prolific, would that be the word to use? Very wise and it's still so relevant in this modern day and age. Take great care of yourselves, guys. God speed to you all and I will see you all again very soon for another video and chat. Thank you.